So, we have now seemingly crossed a bit of a hurdle here, at least from my point of view. <laughs> CIG has not only scheduled, but actually acknowledged the development of a, of a ship that I'm very, very excited to see in the game. So, fingers crossed, it's in white box. Let's keep, let's keep this going. But we're not going to be talking about that ship quite yet. In the future, we will. But you are clear to launch. the Polaris. The Polaris having its interior ki kind of exist. redone a little bit or concepted, I, I think is the exact term they used. Being more or less in a position where CIG can start it getting to work on you know building the ship once they have the time and the space to do it or the time and the people to do it is obviously very welcome news the Polaris is a very highly anticipated ship um not quite ready to make any kind of moves in that direction you know there's always the Nautilus and the buyback token for the Polaris um, now, of course, we had to try out something new from the sale and basically recycle a ship and go and examine some things. And I was pretty heartened to hear from CIG that there are certain moves being made towards AI blades for ships, but the computer components have to come in first. And I had some thoughts along those lines, uh, certainly... Uh, playing around with this ship a little bit towards the towards the idea I'm, I'm warming up to the idea that when it comes to systems like shields coolers power cores things like that I almost want to suggest though I, I'm, I'm still kind of rolling it around in my head I want to suggest the idea of that components like that components that aren't externally visible components that can have a, a large impact on a ship's performance without having to change the physical space of the ship itself or the size or the shape. I would like to see their component slots become universal with a ship like this. So perhaps you can say, hey, you know what? I want to go heavier and I want to have two shield generators instead of only one. And then in at the expense of, say a shield generator or a shield generator for a shield generator at the expense of a cooler or a power core or maybe I want to go heavy into the guns and I want to have you know more coolers versus less shields so that the guns can keep firing keep going longer in terms of heat but heat eh, I mean not really being a mechanic but maybe I want to run some really hot weapons and I want to kind of keep that trigger down a little bit more that's an interesting possibility. I would like to see like an examination of what would happen if you did that with one of the ships in Star Citizen. And obviously when new ships come out and they certainly show off as very powerful in the beginning, sometimes people will kind of look at that and they'll say, oh yeah, well, that's how they sell the new ships. That's how they get the money out of you. And there could be something to that, but then you also have to realize that oftentimes when game developers do something like this, it's also to get more people behind the wheel of it so that they can get more data, get more information on how it performs, right? Certainly, they've gotten plenty of data on the Gladius, which is, of course, a, uh, you know, a very important ship in Squadron 42. So it's, to a certain degree, it's not without its merits, though we must always be somewhat vigilant as to, you know, making sure that this is not, you know, how that ship remains. And certainly, even with ships that I own, I still, I still kind of eyeball them from time to time. I say, this is a little too much, or this could be a little bit dangerous, or this could flip the game a little bit. Because, you know, as much as I like my ships, I, I also like the idea of the game itself. And I've certainly seen what happens to games, even games that I love, 
when certain things get into them that are completely toxic and just completely ruin the game environment. So I'm, you know, I guess maybe I'm a little bit more of a seasoned gamer and I'm just kind of like, eh, no, um, don't do that. Even though it benefits me right now, long term, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, when they're talking about the Polaris, I was, that was pretty cool in, well, in the Star Citizen Live just last week. I was, I was pretty hyped up about that because the Polaris is obviously something that has a lot of proponents in the community and it is a very, very strong ship. Finding out that things like the Perseus and the Kraken and, <laughs> and the Endeavor were not in development, no real surprise there. <laughs> I, I always kind of find it funny when people translate wishful thinking into facts and I see these things, oh, no, 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 I, I, you know, I, I, I met somebody at a, at a citizen thing and uh, yeah, he told me, he was, he was like, he toured CIG and he told me the, 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 the Perseus, they're, they're working on it in secret. And it's just like, no, they're not. Get out of here. You know, <laughs> but some people, you know, their feelings translate to facts. What can I say? Or their wishes. Um, but another, like another cool thing that they talked about is the rework of the interior of the 600i. And I was, you know, I was really, I was really, really pumped up about that. I was, I was very much, you know, just cheering for that moment. Um, as some of you may know, I uh, occasionally do videos with the info runners and we actually made a whole episode where we talked about, um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I made the comment in the video or if it made it into the cut of the video that was released, but I, I referred, at least privately, I referred to it as like having almost like a multiple personality disorder or something like that on the interior of the 600i. And you know, to CIG's credit, they very quickly acknowledged the fact that, yeah, the interior of the 600i was deeply problematic. And of course, we all gave suggestions what we would do, what we would see, what we would change about that ship. And to see CIG now kind of with what development resources they have, obviously a big chunk taken up by Squadron 42. But with what resources they have, looking at a ship that needs to be done, that's already in the game... And, you know, the requirements of that job mash up or mesh up with um, the resources that they have available. And they go, you know what? No, we're going to do that 600i interior. That was that was really great. And, and going even behind, uh, beyond that, a rework of the interior of the Starfarer. I mean, I was shocked. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I was almost certain that CIG was just going to die on that hill. Like They were just like, forget it. No, we're, we're keeping it ugly because that's what we like, you know? <laughs> oh, man. And the ability to carry fuel, obviously, and refuel ships in the future. And refine fuel in the future. And talking about these things. So it was, a, it was a lot of really cool stuff. Of course, you know, 316 is uh, <laughs> only days away. <laughs> um, but the rework of the Gravlev. Space bikes, I felt um, recently, had become uh, a bit of a forgotten area of Star Citizen. Um, a neglected area of Star Citizen. And I was kind of saddened and disheartened uh, a little bit when 315 came out because one of the things you know of course we were talking about ships and ship inventory and something occurred to me and I was like oh man I can do an episode about this this will be cool and so one of the first things I did when the game came out still running a little rough is I went and I tested whether or not cargo had been implemented on space bikes and as of that testing and as of currently, um, it hasn't, or at least not in any way that I was able to access it. 
any way that I had seen. Perhaps it's there, but if it is, it's just not working. So I took a Drake Dragonfly out at Shubin in Le or, or sorry, in on Lyria. And I was trying to access the storage, you know, through the basic, you know, means and then through the inventory screen and it wasn't there and i was i was really disheartened by that i was hoping that it was going to be there because you know for a lot of people it'll sound like like a stupid little thing oh who cares about that but what it implies what it delivers along with it is actually something really cool because if you think about it let's say you're doing ground missions for wallace clem you know and you're delivering drugs to various locations. The drugs are usually the small little pouch that you carry on your person, you stow away. But if you were to be in a position where you had to carry multiple objects for missions and maybe the area where you're landing your ship is a little bit hot in future, like Jump Town 2.0 or something like that, or maybe you wanna, you wanna get to jump town but you want to bring some extra supplies with you just to you know keep your character alive or bring extra ammo or whatnot and you want to store that on your space bike you want to fly down near to jump town maybe 50 60 kilometers away stash your ship there hop on your space bike and then cruise on up to jump town remember the drake dragonfly was supposed to be a very stealthy vehicle it was one of the uh you know one of the big things about that bike one of the, or one of the things that we found out later about that bike and so being able to do that and set up an ambush around jump town with a sniper rifle or something like that was potentially a really cool thing or for the solo player trying to do bunker missions or things like that and you just don't want to park your ship right outside or nearby but you want to kind of slip in on the space bike get the mission done and then get out of there without risking your ship that was that that little change just that little switch being flipped and adding that storage not just to the vehicles the big space vehicles but to the space bikes themselves that could be a huge thing and hopefully i mean it's probably too late for, th for 316 because it is only days away <laughs> um but yeah, I was out that was kind of disappointing that, that 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 didn't make it in that that somehow just kind of slipped under the radar as spite uh, as space bikes tend to do. But, you know, hearing about the grav lev, it was just kind of like, yeah, cool. That's all right, because that was something that I definitely like I want to experiment with more and I kind of want to try more is the idea of messing with inventory. And I've been doing it here in the Redeemer. And it's just like, I, I don't know. And, Somewhere in my head, I was thinking like, ooh, it's going to appear on a hanger inside of the wardrobe, but it didn't. But, you know, <laughs> it's Star Citizen, so baby steps. Baby steps. Very, very slow baby steps. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. So, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us. Please follow us. Please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.